Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Dave Humphrey. Uh, 15 years ago, Dave was here. He designed all of this, um, which we remain grateful for. Um, during the summer, we had an interview process. We had architects come in from around the state. Uh, it was pretty tough competition. Uh, Dave won that competition. Now that we've been working with him for nine months, it was certainly the best choice. He's a, a wonderful professional to have on our, on our team. So Dave. Thank you, Joe. I've heard that five times and I never get tired of hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> We've had the good fortune of having completed uh, over 65 of these clubhouse amenity campus um, projects. And you need to know that your long range planning committee and board and ad hoc committee has really been one of the most insightful and vision seeking groups we've had the opportunity to work with. Very, you know, didn't leave any stone unturned and uh, reined in the budget and so forth and made us, uh, ran us through our paces, but we kind of enjoy that. So you need to know they have been wonderful shepherds uh, in uh, overseeing this project. So I say that about every club, but I really mean it with this group. It's been, it's been great. Um, I'm going to kind of walk you through what we've done, um, so maybe you'll understand um, the reasoning. Joe's, uh, Joe and Peter have been giving you a good idea of how we've assembled this information um, and created the criteria or the program for which we design in accordance with so that you get the, the proper solution. And then what we do is, um, Joe mentioned that we had developed this with Bonita Bay Properties. Um, and the lifestyles were different then. You know, now we're more casual, more engaging with the outside. A lot of these spaces, especially Rosie's, I think, was more internally oriented. You know, the rooms, the spaces are neat. It's a, it's a fun little building, but they're more internal um, to each other. And um, what this does is address, not just Rosie's, but all these spaces, um, all the solutions, um, address our change in lifestyle as well. So I'll kind of point those out as we go along here. Um, this is Rosie's. <clears throat> and um, you'll notice the brown area, um, these two brown areas. This is the outdoor casual dining that Joe was talking about, and that is covered, so it's very reliable space. We, we may screen it, may maybe roll down screens and so forth, but temper it with heaters for the summer and screens for the, and, and fans for the winter, um, or vice versa. <laughs> vice versa, yeah. <laughs> Depends on where you are, I guess. Um, anyway, um, but that does give you that additional space that's, that was one of the number one things mentioned on the, uh, on the survey. The thing that I think is very interesting, the tan area is the existing building. Um, this brown area is the reconfigured bar. Um, and what we're doing now, right now the bar kind of sits this way. And this wall is solid and there's you know, solid cabinets up behind it with TVs and so forth. So, but what we're doing is we're rotating it 90 degrees. Um, wrapping it around this side wall, the, the back walls, and this now becomes basically an island style bar. So that the windows that are there are now going to have fold back doors above the bar level so that you're sitting here and basically everyone kind of has a view to each other and um, major element is that on your in, when you're on the inside you're looking on out through, through the green and there's more of a, an element of camaraderie and so forth there. Um, the thing that I think is really neat about this type of thing, that even though we're just adding two outdoor spaces, that gives us the ability to open up these walls, open up the windows to, to have movable doors that fold back, and you have this kind of really neat nebulous, you're not really sure where the inside and the outside um, start and stop. So you've seen that in some of these, uh, a lot of these restaurants around town, especially over by Coconut and so forth, where they open up the doors and it's this great space where you can kind of, kind of migrate from inside to outside. And it's just a fun atmosphere. It's, it's, a, it's a really wonderful atmosphere. So that happens. It's, I think it's going to totally transform um, the existing facility to the point where it's, uh, it's going to seem like a completely different animal. Um, these doors fold back. Um, same thing with the green room. You have fold back doors on both sides. So this area can be just this wonderful new setting where it engages both sides. And each of these, of course, you know, this dining area, which is more of a room um, as opposed to a ribbon terrace where all you can see is people on the left and the right. This is, this is more of a room. So 
it's a little more cohesive. It's going to feel more like a destination location. You could have separate events um, in each of these locations. So it's really, it's really going to change how this building is used and functions. Um, Joe mentioned this out, outdoor casual seating area. And this is really extremely popular no matter where the venue is right now. It's just the way people like to, to um, enjoy the outside. And it's the casual, it's the real soft seating, casual, like almost like outdoor living room furniture. Um, and uh, with a fire pit in each location. So you're kind of spreading the wealth with respect to that atmosphere. It's not just one centralized fireplace or one centralized fire pit. You get this kind of neat, um, neat atmosphere wherever you are. And each one of these areas can seat eight to ten people. So um, you really have a lot of um, wonderful feeling here where you, in, you, you create a ribbon of of uh, dining and this thread of continuity with the little seating groups and we're nestling it into the existing um, landscape canopy and we'll punctuate that with um, other canopy elements that will kind of create outdoor rooms in the sense of enclosure for those spaces. So it's really, you're talking about really a, a wonderful combination of today's lifestyle where you have you know, covered outdoor area, outdoor area and the migration kind of interlaced um, between those elements. You still have an area that you could have a designated entertainment area, dancing and so forth. So again, you can really accommodate um, a wonderful assortment and variety of functions. So that gives you kind of the idea. This is the expansion um, porch area. That's your green room expansion on the other side. And then you can kind of see how we've created this lacing of seating areas, you know, umbrella tables, soft seating. Um, and of course, right by the, the bank area. So um, it, it, I think it'll really transform that area. This is that area that's now, um, it has the, you know, your banquet seating was in there where you have a, a low wall with windows. So you take those out, fold back the doors, and you can just see it totally changes that, that space. Opens it up. You can see people, you can see and be seen as well as, uh, you know, see the engagement with the nature and landscape and so forth. And, you know, I got to say, this, this area is one of the prettiest areas where you have a foreground, you have this beautiful lake, and then a couple different levels of, of long distance view. It's really an unusual setting that um, we're proud to exploit. <laughs> this is the bar area. Um, Still, you're familiar with the way the seats sit at the bar, but the um, difference is now you'll be able to open up these windows. People will be sitting on these seats looking back at you, but you'll be again looking out at the, at the green and then the lake. So it's a, a little set up a little more synergetic with your, with your membership interaction. There's the bar I was just talking about, so you can come out here and you can see how it kind of laces together with the um, outdoor dining area. So it's more of a designated room. So you can have a nice little birthday party out there. So again, trying to, to create the catalyst for interaction. All right, the fitness center, a little more aggressive program. Uh, again, the brown area represents the expanded footprint. This coral area represents area that we redesigned, reconfigured. And the tan is the remaining um, existing footprint of the building. So what we've done coming in the lobby area, all we've done is kind of created a workspace and closed off the access into the, what was originally a laundry room, which is now a, a workspace, a staff area, um, employee lounge. So what we've done is we've recreated, the original intent was that is going to be a laundry room, storage, um, supplies for the facility. Um, this, the treatment rooms, the spa, I'll show you where that goes, but that's been relocated. And the areas that were treatment rooms, one becomes the employee lounge area, the other one is a conference room, which is really needed in a space like this, whether it's employee to employee or employee to member. It's, you really need a private space where you can go and, and have a, a conference. Um, this is your existing aerobic area. And you know, a key elements to the way you work out um, in, in a successful fitness atmosphere is the desirable programs, you know, Pilates, yoga, um, just aerobics, and they all want to be done kind of at the same time. So this is kind of key to the vitality of this, of this center where you can do simultaneous classes 
Um, it's just a big thing. You can't, you, you can't stretch it into mid-morning or the afternoon because that's not when people want to work out. They want to do work out in the morning or work out in the evening. So this allows for that demand when it wants to be used. A um, couple of training offices. And then kind of the key element to the expansion um, of the fitness center is not just provide a little, a modest increase in equipment um, and, the, and the space to use it, but now you have a designated um, stretching and, and preparation area. There are machines that are beneficial to stretching and preparing for your exercise and workout. Um, but then in the placement and the sequence of establishing the, the, the proper um, equipment layout gives you a series of um, equipment that wraps around a personal training area. So the, the key there is that you can go over to the treadmill and come back to your personal training uh, apparatus, whatever that may be, and then go over to the, you know, uh, cross lats and then come back to whatever it, whatever it is your program, your, your personal fitness program is. So that way when you create this sequence that works around a central core, that way you kind of have home base and you have a very efficient system which ultimately, ultimately helps in, in uh, you know, waiting for equipment and, um, and just your, your whole experience with exercise. So there, there is a personal, uh, or a physical therapy office as well. Um, so it really will be, it will, it will put the proper elements in the proper sequence and room to use it. So um, in looking at this particular plan, you know, Joe mentioned we were trying to maintain the sanctity of that green. Um, and this particular area lent itself so well because it, it provided a, a reasonable footprint we only extended uh, the face of the expansion up about, about 18 feet, so we, we tried not to encroach into the green uh, as much as possible. Um, in doing that, we're pretty landlocked all the way around, so when we were looking at the spa activity um, potential, um, it, it, it really lent itself to exploring a second floor. Now, it's hard to put a second floor on an existing structure, so in creating this footprint, it seemed like a prime opportunity to put the spa facility on the second floor. You know, you've already been trained to come in this entry, uh, the, the lobby area, and really all you're doing is going down the hall um, to kind of a secondary lobby, which takes you, there's a stair and an elevator which takes you upstairs, and I'll show you that in a second. So what this does, this particular, oops, come back. This particular area is the existing building and this kind of shows there's the lobby and the stair tower. Um, that is the fitness center expansion and then you'll see a sl slightly smaller footprint um, for the spa services on the second floor. The pool doesn't really change much. We may address you know furniture and landscape and so forth but um, that stays basically intact. Um, and this just an illustration of how you will, will expand uh, and enhance the exposure to the green with uh, the equipment and so forth. This shows the first three rows of personal training areas. And like I said, there'll be certain apparatus areas and, and uh, elements that will exploit the things that your trainer is trying to get you to do, flexibility or strength or, or whatever that is. But um, again, it's, it's more of the core area with um, access to each of the pieces of equipment around the outside. So, very efficient process. Um, spa services upstairs. So, here's the stair and the elevator. You have a small waiting area, uh, reception, check-in, product sales, and so forth. But this is really designed to take you to the next level and not, not be the spa treatment against the aerobic room. Um, you know, you love that music and you love hearing what's out in the hall, but, but really a, a spa service is go to a destination location, um, come in, check in, go into the locker area, change into your robe, get kind of in your zen state, whatever that may be, wait for your trainer or your uh, uh, masseuse to come and get you, um, use one of the uh, five treatment rooms, whether it's a facial or a massage or so forth. Actually, we have one room that uh, is sizable enough for a couple's massage, which is really quite popular, actually. Um, finish your treatment, go back in and relax and let your free radicals go wherever they go and uh, have some of that um, expensive Zen water. 
uh, go in and shower and, um, and then uh, uh, exit the facility. So it's really meant to be, you know, this will be a concrete floor, there'll be great sound attenuation, and there's really nothing better than a separate venue for this type of experience. So um, just a concept of the, of the entry, very zen-like. Um, the Richmond Center really doesn't have much of a, of a program, not very aggressive. Um, you know, Joe mentioned the, the wall behind the screen uh, would open up, and uh, it really is a wonderful view um, out to the green and the water. And, and then, of course, adding uh, another meeting room uh, to accommodate all your organizations and so forth. It's about the size of this single room, about half the size of this overall space. So um, it'll... Uh, Hopefully it'll assist in, in uh, squelching some of the demand. Again, just a, just a complement to the existing architecture, which we'll try to do in all the buildings, of course. Um, this sh just shows the overall campus. Um, the, the tan is the, represents the existing structures. So you can see we've tried to keep them pretty localized around the building. You can see the, the extent into the green was minimal. Um, and uh, responds directly to each I individual area and, and still have this great thread of continuity with circulation and integration of, of your next facility uh, uh, events. So um, anyway, um, thank you for your attention and I'd like to turn it over to Doug Larson <coughs> for financing.